to see you here. I don't know if y'all want to get into it or not. We'll save that for another day. All right, Steve. Well, in your packet, I've got a little outline there that I'll go through and uh, drinking water update. Uh, last year, we told you we'd get started on phase one. That's connecting North Lounge to Spring Creek. Uh, so far, we are basically complete on about 2.5 miles of 12-inch water main that that started at Guest Road up Mulligan and across Ashurst to Stud Steel and then down and up Skipper Bridge and all the way down Stafford Bright to the south end, basically right below Mountain Eagle. Uh, as part of this first phase, we also put in a mile and a quarter of eight inch water main. Uh, this was for uh, looping purposes. We only had one feet across Davis Road to handle all of the Gramercy and uh, Co Coventry and all of that area. So this this is going to help a lot with our, our water complaints up in that area, this uh, looping area here. Phase two, uh, of this will be going basically up Notting Hill and Orr uh, to Staten and then across our current easement that we have right along beside the power line easement where our sewer line runs. We'll be coming into Lucas Richardson there to Valdell and then back down to Nelson Hill. Uh, they've got that all but ready. I actually stopped by there on my way here and uh, we should have those bids uh, in early March for your meeting proceed with that. Uh, our next area that we was looking at was tying South Lounds in there at James Road. Uh, as you know that uh, the board that we're doing there, that's that first step there, so we'll, we'll have a little bit more of that on the agenda this, this week. And then uh, engineering for the rest of that, they'll start right in on that as we finish up the engineering on this phase two part on North Lounds. Another area that we had this year that uh, we got a significant bit of uh, discussion discussion on the water meters. Uh, just a little bit of information there. We have approximately 8,000 meters. We've got about 7,000 customers. Uh, so there's about 1,000 of them that also have irrigation meters. We still have about 1,500 of the older meters that are not radio read capable. Uh, it's going to take ballpark numbers, about 350000 to replace them. And we probably have about 2500 in the ballpark with some dying each month, the batteries on those dials that uh, make that radio reading capable. And that's going to take in the neighborhood of $400,000 to repair those, uh, get the new dials put on. Uh, we have a pretty intense goal to try to get that done as soon as possible, but not later than 2020. And as long as y'all let me buy them, we're going to be working hard as we can to get them uh, replaced and get our all of our system where we're ready to read completely. That's been a goal for some time, but we saw the importance of that through the, the uh, fall months into Christmas this year on that. On the use subdivisions, uh, my, uh, right now, Steve, on new subdivisions, are you requiring a radio read? Yes. Uh, that's all we. That's, that's all, all you've got now. Yeah. Yeah. And have been for some time. Okay. The battery life on these is in and around 10 years. They, they, they say 20 years, but you got a 10 year warranty on them complete. And so anything you get over that, it's, it's gravy basically. And you'll have a few of that may be underwater. You know, from time to time, they may not last quite that long. We'll get a little bit of. Uh, rebate on them. A battery that lasts 10 years? Yeah, it's built into that dial, basically. Wow. Ever ready. Never ready. <laughs> Sorry. That bunny hadn't got a chance against that battery. Probably uh, so. Mm -hmm. As far as the wastewater goes, um, you know, we had the uh, Jeepa loan that we took out and the, the update that we're doing there. The solar bees and the new sonic is in, installed now complete in the holding pond. That should help us tremendously with our algae issue and hopefully have us where we won't have any uh, violations on our permit with that. Uh, we, we wound up getting them in here at a good time. We'll finish that off as we begin to heat up. We'll be able to see exactly what that does. Uh, additionally, as part of that project, there is uh, drying beds that we'll be adding at the Springfield there at the ponds. Uh, the influent ponds, we're going to put new liners in them. 
and then some of the lift stations will be uh, VFDs will be installed. This should help us with our flow a lot better, those variable frequency drives on those pumps. The bids for that should open in the April time frame. Uh, you may recall that we uh, canceled out the hay uh, contract that we had. Probably this year, I, I'm not positive we're going to be looking at trying to get another contract in. We're probably going to be working with uh, ourselves and another gentleman that helped out last year uh, through working with under that contract, that guy, but to try to get our fields and improve the quality of our fields that we have now and get them back up to par where we're doing doing good with them. Also, you probably know that there are several acres of planted pines down at the LAS. Those have got to the stage where we have had some interest in uh, harvesting that straw, so we're going to look at putting together a straw contract and getting that out this, this upcoming year to see if we can get a little bit of income off that. As far as the uh, uh, list stations go, again, we'll be looking at a few more variable frequency drives on the trunk line stations. Uh, one thing we're doing to help with our uh, fog situation, which is bad oils and grease, is some blowers that we found that is helping us a good bit of these stations. Uh, we've had the multi-smarts now for about three years. One thing we've noticed from the get-go on a few of those stations is we was having a little bit of problem. And even though they say they're uh, good to, I think about 120 degrees, and, and some of those <coughs> cabinets in the direct sunshine, we exceed that. So a few of them on our main stations, we've uh, just added some awnings over them, and that's, like I say, it, it benefits the guys when they're having to work there, but that's not the purpose of them. The purpose of them is to try to uh, reduce that heat inside those cabinets more than anything else. Just a question. Coming back to, to fog. Yes. Um, what are what, what are the county's requirements on pumping those grease traps? We we have a grease trap program and we check those along. We do spot checks and then they report to us on on the uh, pumping schedules on them. Okay. So, but do we have a specific schedule that says that every grease trap needs to be pumped within a certain period of time, or is it just an, an inspection that we do? It's basically an inspection, and what we that's a growing uh, program. Smoking pig has to be pumped, obviously, more than somewhere else. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, they're, they're literally, you know, and that's somewhat <laughs> not again, but we're we're working that and trying to get that down before we will have a full program that specifies that and, and that's what we'll go about. Okay. One thing that we've done, y'all know we had those issues with the brakes on the force main on Coleman Road, Valtech Road. We've got some pressure recorders that's been installed on them and we've had them on now since uh, probably about two months. Uh, we're going to get those readings and evaluate those and then also move them down the line to get a little more information on that to see what we can find out on that. Uh, some more information as to if there's been spikes and, and what can be done to prevent that. Moving to the next area is the preventative maintenance needs. Um, I want to be careful how I, I, I say this, but when I was hired I was told that uh, we wasn't going to get in, in the shape that some other areas have been in. And um, as y'all know, I have spent a lot of money on pumps. And I ask this question. And what I'm telling you here is preventative maintenance needs is with the things that we've had come along, we, we've had to work on a lot. Pumps, we've had brakes on the pipes, we've had emergency repairs. And, I've not been able to get the preventative maintenance where it needs to be, where I want it, certainly not where it needs to be. And this is some areas that I've identified as that we have got to get more serious on and, and get after it. Uh, my budget request will reflect that. Uh, so for those of y'all that <coughs> see that. You want to back off that 25% spots? You want to go to Rose and Bridger and Crow's Utilities? I might have eat into some of that, I don't know. <laughs> but on the drinking water side of the house is uh, our elevated and underground tanks. Uh, we need to have a better program on them uh, to 
for inspections, for clean outs, for painting, and there's some repairs that have to be done. You find different things on those inspections. We have six elevated tanks and two significant underground tanks. Now we got a, a 20,000 gallon uh, hydro pneumatic tank at uh, Alapa Hall and also at Creekside West. I don't have them in this plan. We can handle those, but those other tanks require uh, contractors coming in to help us with them. Um, looking at initially probably 150000 a year to keep that up to where it needs to be. I have put money in the budget, but again, when the 16-inch force main breaks out there, that, that sort of takes a precedent and when you have a well pump this down. So we, we want to look at that a little closer. A valve exercising program. Uh, this is something that uh, a lot of municipalities have and utilizes. It ensures that your valves are operating properly when you need them and you, the location of them and you know when you're never going to those valves they just invariably get overgrown and then you have an emergency uh, you have a break here somewhere and you, you wind up cutting off you know all of Stone Creek and all of Grove Point when you might get to cut off one street in Stone Creek to solve that problem so this helps us if we were able to do this and get a program going here that takes money for a, a machine to do that uh, efficiently and all it'll take some staff down the, down the way too uh, but it, it'll pay for itself over time also water system modeling uh, that is a program that's highly recommended by American Water Works Association it provides you valuable information about your system as far as growth flushing and troubleshooting issues uh, Additionally, Ashley had mentioned to me that he had found something through the insurance company that if we had a good uh, water modeling system that was up to date, that may also help with some of their requirements that they have to provide information to the insurance companies. As far as the wastewater side of the house goes on preventive maintenance needs, uh, lift station rehab, that needs to be an ongoing program. Uh, we have 56 lift stations. Uh, I don't have the breakdown of what we have exactly on duplex and triplex, but you know, obviously, some of them have a lot more uh, usage than others. And you know, you may wind up rehabbing Be Bevel Creek and Whitewater twice before you do some of these other ones. But overall, this is something we probably need to earmark about 300,000 a year for uh, because you know. Lift stations on average need rehabbing anywhere from ever 10 years on some of them to at a maximum of 20 years and you know at 56 to a year that stretches on out outside of that uh, schedule anyway. Um, that just helps with a lot of big <coughs> spills and, and it's much more economical you know to repair them with a program like that than it is you know, as needed. Manhole inspection and rehab. Uh, I'm looking at about 80,000 a year there. We have 1,960 manholes currently. Uh, I was a little surprised at that myself when I got the updated number uh, today. But manholes uh, are the primary source of infiltration. And again, I'm not saying this in a detrimental matter, but the city of Valdosta on, on their their latest issue that they had, a lot of that has to do with infiltration. And if we continue not to, to inspect <coughs> and, and put these manholes on a list, they will continue to, to, more and more water will leak in there. That increases our treatment cost, it leads to spills and permit violations. So we need to be working that up a little bit closer to. Another area that I've identified and I've wanted to do a, on now for a couple of years, and we just we haven't even put it in the budget, but uh, it is in there this year, but easement and right-of-way clearing. Uh, we have a couple of particular easements that I have in mind, and that's where our force main goes through from like Lake Park through the woods there over to the treatment plant. Also, uh, where it goes through the... Uh, West Wind Farms, I believe it is, or whatever there, sort of from James Road down through to Indian uh, Ford Road. That is overgrown and uh, 
completely on the one to through there at 84. And we need to get, we need to be able to inspect them. We can have a leak there and come to find out, you know, and, and we're spilling and that becomes a reportable spill or something. But then worst case scenario, if we even if we find it, what is it going to take for us to be able to even get to it and work on it? Uh, so I think if we can get those cleared, I believe we have the capability of possibly what we have or certainly with the addition of a, uh, a good heavy rotary more than I think we can maintain these a lot with our, our trapper and mower. Had a few other just topics of discussion uh, sort of to, to give you updates on or things to be looking, looking for. Grassy Pond uh, sewer project. Uh, Moody is uh, very this is a very uh, hot topic for them. They had an incident down at Grassy Pond uh, through the holidays, uh, and they've had continual issues with their sewers down there. They want to tie everything on to the county sewer. Uh, they've looked at how would be the best way to do this, and what they would like to do is do this through our P4 contract that we have with Moody. They feel like they've talked with their legal and everything. They feel like they have an avenue to do that. So if that's the case, and when we get it all together and bring it to you, then we would be looking at possibly uh, doing the engineering work and everything on this or having it done and then reimbursing us. We feel like uh, this could be handled with our E1 pumps mostly. There could be one main lift station, but we're also looking at exploring the avenue of whether E1 would work across the board. The LAS expansion, uh, one thing that we want to do uh, as early as this year uh, it will help with our improving our hay fields and that's the back 50 acres is in cultivation just before you go into the shooting range for the sheriff's department. I believe we're going to go ahead and pull that out and, and plant that in hay, have it sprig, and then as we need to we'll work with the engineer to see about increasing our permit uh, for the flow there. But this will help us be able to spray our hay fields a lot better. There's always a little bit of conflict and concern with, you know, what, what the grass man needs to spray versus the cotton or the peanut man. So this will help alleviate that problem. It's only 50 acres. Another area that um, we're going to need to seriously look at probably sooner than later, and that's uh, another elevated tower up in the north end of the county. Um, Quite possibly in the Union Road area, uh, my thoughts and and reasoning on this is as Creekside continues to grow, in order to provide adequate uh, fire protection at all, a, a tower will be the best option there. Also, it seems that uh, that area is going to be a growth potential also. So, I want to look at that. Chief, there's going to be a gentleman, or a couple of gentlemen that's going to come to you. To you within the next couple of weeks. I want to talk about that. They got a subdivision they want to put up there off of Union Road. And uh, I, uh, Steve and I talked to them. I talked to them this morning before I came up here. And they're going to try to set something with you next week uh, about some property to do that. Okay. Um, additionally, that can work in right with that also, or uh, a separate project is. You know, as there, the growth area seems to be on the north end, and we're going to probably need to look at adding some wells up on this north end to supply water. There has uh, been a long theory that there that we can tap in if we get far enough north that we can tap into a good source water that may not require treatment. I know the city of Hayhire does not have to treat. There's some other fairly larger subdivisions that don't have to treat. So that's something that we're going to need to be aware of and, and be on the lookout for is, is some uh, land acquisition that can take care of that for us. Is, is this due to the quality of water in that particular aquifer? Yes. Like I say, our, our Spring Creek well, uh, the Moody Air Force Base wells that they have, and the Stone Creek wells, uh, your source water is not nearly as good there. That's what you have at your kindergarten with your period wells. That requires additional treatment due to the organics, which is supposedly due to the uh, infiltration on the Wipatucci River up uh, near the Scrubs property. Um, these last three projects, 
that you mentioned outside the grassy field. <coughs> the LAS expansion, your elevated tower and wells, uh, and the land acquisition or well field in North Lambs. Are you expecting those to be SPLOS 8 projects? Yes, sir. Another thing that y'all had uh, requested uh, some information on was independent water systems. Uh, I worked on this uh, quite a bit, and at times maybe I made it harder than it needed to be, but basically, uh, you know, a, con a concept of this magnitude does have a lot of pros and cons to consider, and uh, I tried to, to not look for all of those, but tried to throw some out. And obviously, you would add customer base and revenue immediately if we took these uh, as new water systems come in that, that are not in our service area. That's what we're talking about here. Outside of our service area, we started them off. Um, Lowndes County would run the... Yes, sir. And I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just want to be sure when we talk about service area here, we're talking about where you have lines. This this would be not where we have lines. This, That's what I'm saying. This yeah. is... Yeah. Yeah. But it's See, still I think that can I think that and you weren't here earlier, but I think to two there's two separate things. There's all those existing ones that are all over that map. Right. Then there's also been some discussion as far as expanding and meeting residential areas. Would right. we get into the independent? So I think that's what the yeah. chairman's yeah. looking at for clarification on the independent or private. Yeah. yeah. And what I'm talking about, and I'll get down here. I got a, a few of them that will maybe clarify this as we go down a little bit. But but this what I've looked at here is. Uh, if, if you chose to develop this property here, obviously we don't have any lines close by or anything. And you know the idea would be what would what what would it benefit the county to come in here and start this water system off from the get go? And again, looking at the pros there, you know there would be no trust indentures involved. Lowndes County would have the system from the get go. They would oversee it. They would everything would be in the county specs. We make those uh, systems come up to county specs now, but still you would have it from from the get-go, the added customer base and the increased revenue. I think the perfect perfect example of this, and one that has worked extremely well, is Creekside West. Uh, the city of Ayara, uh, for whatever reason, couldn't supply them water. They come to the county. We went up there. We drilled the wells. We provided the water from day one at Creekside West. Creekside West has had steady growth. It's been a, a great thing. The flip side is the cons, and uh, you know, right out the gate now, used to you could get by with a single well on water systems, but now there's uh, anytime you come in on whether you know if it's a, a water system that is uh, required to be permitted, you have to have two wells right from the get go. Uh, another concern is, like I spoke of earlier, is your source water. You know, what kind of water are we going to get into according to where these projects are? If, if we get into that quote unquote bad water that requires uh, heavy duty treatment, you know, we could wind up with multiple MIAX units around the county that we're trying to take care of this water to make it meet the expectations of the state and the permit. Uh, you would have the added cost of personnel, the sampling, and the paperwork. Additionally, there would be flushing, uh, you know, additional flushing that may uh, be required. And when I looked at this and looked at some of our examples, uh, and one other thing that was requested of me was a return on investment, and maybe that's where I made it hard, I'm not sure, but I, I struggled to come up with, a, with an actual return on investment because, again, if we look at Creekside West, that was a great return on investment. But if we flip that and we look at Lake Alapahal out there, or if we look at Moody Family Housing, what was originally expected, although that was on our system, uh, Tuscany Palms, we had the, the water lines there, but to me those are examples of, you know, systems that the return on investment has not been good at all, and, you know, Tuscany Palms has picked back up and is going now, but, you know, those are some areas where it has not worked out real well. Another thing that has been mentioned, you know, is whether or not we, we move out to pick up some uh, a water system that is, that is way outside of our service area, not within that thousand foot. You know, some people have said, you know, well, we'll pick up customers along the way and all. 
I know Ms. Evans, we, we've talked to the folks over there in, in your district that, that talked about how many would convey. And while I was doing this, I looked at a couple of areas where this has happened at it. Shamrock Hills and uh, over uh, on North 41 uh, there. Of 39 uh, property owners in that area, we've only picked up 15 customers and don't seem to be any interest from anyone else, you know. So that's one. And then Worthington Woods up there just on the north side of uh, Bowwood School of 24 homes, we've picked up two. So the old, the old saying, build it and they'll come, don't necessarily uh, add up where water's concerned. I, I think a lot of times they they think about, they, they want to do that, and granted, if their well's failing, they do want you, but all those people that their well's working fine, you know, then when you get there and you tell them these costs, then it, it becomes a little bit of a different story. I think really, this team, again, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think as much as anything, I, I'm not sure that you're, what the, your data shows, but you're not going to pick up existing customers, but I think what it allows you to do is create an opportunity as development goes that you'll be able to have customers, that, new customers that have come in onto that line through new development. And certainly if you have the lines out there, then all new development is required to come That's on right. The only other thing I put there, and I don't mean to read it, but there at the bottom of this section is since 2015, I think we've had three new water systems have been permitted in Lowndes County according to the state. Uh, that's Notting Hill, which is off of Moore Road, your Dollar General Stateville Highway, and Brookwood Place. We all know there's been a couple of other rezoning requests that were relatively uh, controversial and they didn't materialize, the one being on Thompson Road and the other on North Valdale Road. Notting Hill and Brookwood Place were the only two um, that were supported by the current comprehensive plan. And Brookwood Place is over there, if you're not familiar with that, just uh, east of uh, Dewar Elementary School. That is an area where we probably were not going. Uh, it's all but surrounded by city uh, utilities there. We would have had one, one landowner that we would have been able to have went through to service them and it just that, that was not going to be feasible at all so uh, you know what I see here is granted there has been some requests and maybe there's been people that's had great ideas that, but they haven't even come to us because they already knew the water wasn't there but uh, that's what I put together for you on the uh, independent water systems and all if there's other information that you want me to try to gather and come up with I'll certainly look into that that's Wellington Woods. That is right, Wellington Woods. Now is that across from Scrubs? The one across from, That's no. Worthington. That's Worthington. Where's yeah, Wellington? Right. Wellington is north of Bowwood. Yeah, yeah, just north of Bowwood on the right hand side. That's what this is. <coughs> yeah. The only other thing, I, I did, did have a map behind that, and that just shows you those areas where I talked about first of all our water. Uh, the second thing Mr. Slaughter had asked me just for some ballpark pricing. And these prices are stuff that was good roughly a year ago, but I think for all, for budgetary purposes, they're still good as far as putting pipe in the ground and a few other odds and ends there. And then the last map, uh, it just updated, a small update, but you've actually seen this before on maybe the 2016 uh, retreat that showed all the community water systems that are out there. I'm not going to guarantee you that every one of these are still um, actually active, but this is um, some of these are, are active and good system, and then they, several of these are just small mobile home parks and whatnot. 69 of them, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <coughs> questions, comments? Yeah, see any questions? I was going to ask about the maintenance program, so I'm glad to see y'all are addressing that. We should be learning a valuable lesson 
Yes. Well, I mean, not exactly. No, no, that's been an no. issue of mine from day one. Right. We want to make sure that that infrastructure, just because it's out of sight, that is not out of mind. We want to make sure it gets taken care of. Right. And it's going to cost you far less. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, it's sir. going to cost, unfortunately, for Mount Austin, it will continue to cost them for many years to come. And they have a lot of debt to pay back. Well, another thing, um, I may be talking a little out of turn here, but I think you know, this latest thing is put them under another consent order that the DPD will be writing for them. You know, a lot of times when you, as you give those consent orders, you can address them yourself and give EPD your plan. But if it continues not to work, then they step in and they write your plan for you and, and they, they hold the reins then. Totally. I think you all can see by reviewing um, the current conditions of our Water and sewer system that uh, is probably in the best uh, health that it has been in since it was developed from a financial standpoint as well as from a structural standpoint. Uh, we still have some issues, obviously, that we're working through with, uh, that Steve's already mentioned, uh, trying to make our system. Uh, friendly, uh, user friendly. Stephanie and IT and Steve are trying to work through issues so that the users will be able to uh, enjoy the technical abilities of making their payments and so forth. And uh, Steve has already indicated improving the ability of the system to section off certain areas when we need to have maintenance and so forth and not cutting down our whole northeast section uh, when we have a problem. So, um, and our biggest, uh, our biggest concern on our leaks, Steve, has been that section of poor quality pipe. That we have had to right. replace sections of that all along and that's been going on now for five years. <laughs> Or better. Yep. So, and um, I think we're getting close to having that issue corrected. But overall, I think the board should be very pleased with the uh, situation of our board and sewer. And a good part of that, obviously, goes to Steve's supervision. Absolutely. Um, we got all been bumped anyway. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, we'll, and we will be getting more to you pumps too. Um, on the on the long range plan of completing the loop, yes, sir. so that we'll be able to provide as much as anything redundancy throughout the county with our water. What, what is your timeline? It, it best guess of when you'll be able to complete that loop. Probably five years and obviously one thing and, and I left that out possibly is once we get everything connected on from the south to the north uh, what we said we would do we would come back at that time which would hopefully be next year not later than the following year evaluate again and be sure that we do still want to make the loop on the east side that it is worthwhile and what we want to do yeah and, and that was going to be you know a, a question because Traditionally, we got the new high school out there. It's being provided by the city, which is fine. But um, there hasn't been a lot of growth on that east side. So that's something that we're going to have to look at and consider. You're probably, if you get anything out that way, there's a limit because of private forest land right. that is on that east side that we'll probably never see development. Um, so that that will, even though in in our, in our mind we'd like to think of the looping, uh, you can still build in that redundancy throughout yeah. that system without having the concept of looping. I, I think it will be interesting, and what we'll have to be able to look at for about a year and a half to two years is to see with the high school being out there and water out that far. And I think they've actually have one run water all the way to 84 and back up to uh, that, the high, well, 
they've run it all the way back around, I believe. They've run it all the way, all the way around the perimeter yes. and back up eight yes. and four back towards the city limits. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. So I think it will be interesting to see if they get any growth off of that and and what happens with that. And then I think that will help us determine, you know, is it going to be financially feasible to go that eastern route. Okay. I wanted to come back just a second because I think to the map. Yes. All right, the map right now potentially doesn't show that east route you might say. Yes, sir. It, it actually does there oh, okay. uh, with the circle four and the circle five over to the right hand side. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. And it would pick up right there. It's not as as good to see here. It would pick up there at Lester Road and run all the way up in the uh, Area four would go all the way out, and we we ran it just past. I believe it's more road there to the fire station, okay. and then we picked up. I believe that's more road, and it runs back on Lakeland Highway a bit, and then it cuts up through there because the city was already on the perimeter, and there we wasn't going to get anything. So even though it's out, there's more potential for us to go that way, and then pull it back in on Old Knights Academy. It's where we would connect back up at. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any yeah, other thoughts? Just, I think all this begins and ends with um, with our with our receiving payment for water services. Um, so I wanted to go back to what he was saying a minute ago. I, I learned Steve and I were able to uh, talk extensively about how all that works, and, it, and, and I really appreciate you <coughs> taking time and explaining all that to me and seeing it firsthand with that issue we had at Stone Creek recently. But how do, what do we need to do to ensure that we regain, I don't think we've really lost any credibility at this point, I think with us meeting with those folks and everything, it, it, it went a long way, but, but these radio read, radio read meters, I think that's very important that we get those in the ground everywhere that we can, and you said that cost was less. Right now. It, it's 350 to get the old meters, and then another 400. So we're probably looking at a, uh, to be on the safe side, I'd say 800,000. Uh, you know, but we we've, we've been spending on that, and you know I've put money in the budget for that. That's coming up here pretty, pretty hefty, and you know the goal would be to be not later than the end of 2020. Just know it's very important that we be able to collect what's rightfully well, ours yeah. and, and make sure those readings are right and, that, um, and we make it as easy on those folks that have to do that as possible to ensure that, that the other as we can be. the other thing that those radio read meters will do that those 1500 won't do and all the rest of them have the ability to do it as long as the batteries are good on them it's when people do complain, we can go out there and do what we call get the graphics off of them that shows and we can we can put information in front of the customer says, look, on on these three days your usage went from an average of you know twenty five hundred a day, y'all shut up to twelve thousand a day. That that's why you got a hot water bill. Now can y'all help me think of anything and then you know, as you put that before them they say, Well, you know the irrigation line was broke over there in the corner and it was running straight off into the ditch and we didn't know it and you know more likely it's I didn't do anything yeah, it I must be your meter yeah. so it's going to be a problem with the meter yeah. so with the with the radio read meters and you're talking about the ones that need repairing yes sir. Uh, are you now manually reading those meters we do manually read them. <coughs> those meters work fine the only thing that don't work is that signal to your computer when you drive through it. Okay. The, the meter is still working perfectly. I, I, and, and I'm kind of going back to this other issue, but there was an issue with staffing from the standpoint of being able to get to and on a timely manner reading those measure. meters, which kind of created some of these issues. Are we back on track to address that now? We, we are addressing that. We actually will have some interviews to put another person on staff, uh, and we, we're working that. Uh, I will tell you that we had a single individual that was reading our meters. I didn't make a correction to that when I got here, and I have, I have uh, learned a valuable lesson on that. And we won't get in that situation again. 
but uh, we'll have a second person and we may, they may have some additional duties, but we're gonna have a backup person at all times that'll know. Our issue happened is, is that person went out on medical leave immediately yeah. and that person, where these radio reads were not working, where these meters that are not out at the curb, that person had done that job exclusively for about 20 years, close to it, and um, it made us fall apart. Yeah. 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 What I thought was cool, the most interesting takeaway from what Steve shared with me was that like, that truck can pull in the neighborhood, a big neighborhood, with, with that system in it, and it starts pinging information. I mean, it just starts bombarding them with radio transmissions and readouts from all that stuff. So correct me if I'm wrong. So when they get back to the office and download all that information, and then they have to look and see, okay, which ones didn't come through. So it that reads zero or whatever. It does. Then they got to get in the vehicle and go all the way back out there and pick up those. 20 or 10 or 2 or whatever it is to, to manually read them. So if they're all working, I mean, one trip through that neighborhood and bam, they're done versus somebody walking house to house. To house. I mean, how much more efficient can you get? Them? Well, I think the lesson as much sure. as anything, I mean, there was a lot of lessons that we learned, but I think the biggest lesson learned is, is that from the consumer standpoint, you know, that nobody don't mind paying a bill, but a lot of families still work on budgeting their household bill. And if their war bill has been running X and then all of a sudden they get three X's, then certainly that's an issue and a concern yeah. with them. Uh, and, it, and they get those that three times the amount basically because there's just been some missed readings and, and then all of a sudden it then it's caught it up, up, you know, yeah. it catches it up. So, I mean, I... It, I that's I, definitely not been where we want it, but we are, we got a, a plan to be fully back on track with that. And we've addressed that issue across the board. Yeah, well, there's nothing that we can do about you know folks that have put in this particular case. And bless her heart, you know she did a great job for 20 years, and all of a sudden she has a medical issue that doesn't allow her to do it. So, so she's not on the job. No. And won't be back. Uh, she has taken additional leave without pay at this time that is allowed by the. Uh, so well, the answer to that is we don't want to get. Yeah. Right. The, the one thing I would say on, on the uh, what we'll also have the ability to do with this uh, radio read is on some of our routes that's a little bit smaller, I mean, you can read all of those meters in a day, day and a half. And then if we get this to where we only have that 25 to 50 that you know has went dead, my goal is to minimally, uh, minimally have everything back up to par quarterly. You know, and maybe even monthly, we'll replace those batteries that go dead because you're going to always have that happening some. So, you know, that will will help us with that. From there's there's one other little bump in the road that I see, and that's currently um, we have our 1A route, which includes Stone Creek, Grove Point, Creekside, and and some of Bemis and whatnot. I think some of Bemis, but anyway, we got about. 2,800 to 3,000 customers on that route, and then we got a couple of other routes that only have one has only just over 1,200, 1,500. So, while well, we still got things a little mixed up, and hopefully we're going to be able to get this done by March, April time frame at the latest, we're going to reroute our water routes and try to balance them out. So there'll be one other time where they it won't be that they are missing a bill or anything, but we obviously can't turn around and bill someone in two weeks that just got billed before for minimum billing. So we got to work through that a little bit. We'll address that and determine the best way to do that. But we've got to get those routes smoothed out because that'll help us also in the big picture. Okay, on the, on the and I'm, I'm maybe just taking way too far into the future, but we're talking about these readable meters. Um, is the technology there available, for example, Stone Creek? Um, Grove Point, that area out there to where a uh, an antenna could be put on the tower mm -hmm. so that it automatically is reading those meters and it just sends that directly to billing and utility? That is a possibility. Uh, question is, I'm, I'm not sure it's with our current meter. We've looked into that. The problem, that that is super for somewhere like Hey Howard. It's not even bad for Valdosta. 
the hostel is a little bit larger, but you take a hay hire up or a lake lead or a lake park, that's an excellent idea because they can put one or two repeaters, uh, antenna and a repeater, and they can get everything. Our problem is when I tell folks how we are, I said we're stretched out from, from 29 to 2 and 11 miles east to, to Moody. And when you look at it from that way, we just don't feel like it's feasible to look at that. You know, I, I have thought about looking at just how much if we put a, a, a receiver on like the Stone Creek Tower, would it get all of Stone Creek, Foxborough, uh, Grove Point, and Nelson Hill? You know, if it was to do all of that, uh, that, that could be interesting. That's probably about a one mile radius around that tower. Yeah. That, those abilities are available. You have North Lake in there too. So, you know, you would get uh, a third of our customers that way. But uh, that's something we can certainly look at as time goes on. All right. Any, any other questions for Steve? Nope. All right. Steve, again, thank you. You've done a fantastic job with it. And we appreciate you very much. So, eat good, exercise, and wear your seatbelt because we like it. I think the thing can be said for all three of us. I remember when we went up and they didn't think it was going to be built. Alright, do y'all want to take a break or move on? Or? I do. I